A new startup in Canada wants to build the first conscious artificial intelligence on a quantum computer by using Roger Penrose's ideas about consciousness. The startup is located in Vancouver, Canada and called Nirvanic. It was founded by Suzanne Gildart, who previously worked on robotics and sold off a company for several hundred million dollars. Neat. But hey, I recently succeeded in burning a paper on camera without setting off the smoke alarm. Let no one say I'm not technologically competent. But back to the startup. Gildard has a PhD in quantum something from the University of Birmingham and also worked with D-Wave. I'm telling you this so you know this isn't a quack enterprise, at least not obviously so. The website says that along with top people at Google, we believe consciousness research is the next big quantum use case. This prompted Quantum Insider to claim that consciousness research is the next quantum use case. Such a lot of nonsense. Okay, let's sort this out. First, I have a pretty good idea who those top people at Google are. Here is Hartmut Nevin, Vice President of Engineering at Google. Quantum information science may enable us to answer one of humanity's deepest questions. What creates conscious experience? An attractive conjecture is that consciousness is how we experience the emergence of a single classical world out of the many the multiverse is composed of. With academic collaborators, I've started a program to experimentally test this conjecture using methods of quantum neurobiology. If our conjecture is correct, this would allow us to expand human consciousness in space, time and complexity. Yes, that's the same guy who wrote the blog post about Google's Willow chip, which created the myth that Google had found evidence for parallel universes that then made global headlines. Nevin is also one of the authors of the now infamous Wormhole on a Quantum Computer paper, so I'm definitely getting some strange vibes here, but back to this new startup. The website explains that our thinking is inspired by Penrose, Hammeroff's, or OR theory. Nirvanic believes our consciousness experience aligns well with key properties of quantum mechanics, entanglement, superposition and measurement. Our approach is to use these properties with quantum computers to create conscious agentic AI systems that are aligned with human values. But well, that doesn't make any sense. Penrose has argued that consciousness is not computable. His reasoning is, in a nutshell, that humans can understand Gödel's theorem, which an algorithm can't, because that would contradict Gödel's theorem. Hence, human brains do something that isn't computable. I don't buy this argument because it's possible to prove Gödel's theorem with symbolic reasoning and that doesn't contradict Gödel's theorem. I don't just believe this is possible. I know it's possible because a computer algorithm has in fact proved Gödel's theorem with symbolic reasoning. But then I myself have forgotten how the proof works, so if Penrose is right, Right, then maybe I'm now unconscious. Be that as it may, Penrose thinks that consciousness isn't computable, so I find it rather ironic that this woman says she can build a conscious computer based on Penrose's ideas. Then again, if you look at the way that Penrose's ideas have been mathematically realized by him or other people, they're computable. Together with Stuart Hameroff, he's, for example, developed the idea that consciousness is created in the brain in big molecules called microtubules. These microtubules, so the idea, can create coherent superpositions and these superpositions then collapse, which creates consciousness. This idea has a few problems. Microtubules aren't just present in the brain, they aren't specific to humans. It's controversial that they have any significant quantum effects, and even if they have, it's unclear what that should have to do with consciousness. But even if we leave all this aside, it doesn't take a quantum computer to uh, compute what these microtubules do. 
We know this because the best support for Penrose's idea comes from a computer simulation of microtubules, the result of which supports the idea that they can survive in coherent superpositions for some time. That said, it makes sense that you don't need a quantum computer for that because there isn't a lot of entanglement going on. Okay, that was a lot of words. If you've already forgotten half of what I said, this video comes with a quiz that'll help you remember what we talked about. But the brief summary is that if you buy the Penrose and Hammeroff idea, then either you can't compute consciousness or you can compute it on a classical computer. So how is that a use case for quantum computing? There are a lot of other red flags on the website. For example, it states that first-person experience and free will are properties of consciousness that we can't explain with classical physics, and that superposition creates a feeling of choice. Both of these statements are highly questionable and at the very least empirically unsupported. There are a lot of theories about consciousness. A recent review paper listed a whopping 200 of them and most of them have nothing to do with quantum things. The brief summary is that for the time being you have better chances to find consciousness in your fridge than in a quantum computer. Did you know that carrots have microtubules? Yes, I've been talking about quantum physics again. It's definitely my favorite topic. But did you know that I have a quantum mechanics course that you can take for free on Brilliant? My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.